Hey guys, today we're back with an updated review. And uh, today we're going to be pretty much uh, telling what else happened with that P365XL after the last video I made. Uh, me pretty much telling the 365XL was junk. So uh, stay tuned for this one. <laughs> Alright guys, we're back. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, my P365XL uh, is junk video is almost right at 17,000 views right now. And uh, it just uh, was published the 11th of July, so that's uh, pretty decent for me. But uh, I was going to pretty much make a updated review telling you all pretty much what's happened since then. Uh, what I've come to some conclusions with the gun. Why I really think some things happened with it, some things didn't. Uh, but starting off, uh, one of the biggest uh, comments that I've had on that video is that my finger was right on the slide. Nowhere during that video was my finger ever touching the slide. And as you can see, right here is my Glock, Gen 5, 34, I keep it at the hip at all time. Whenever I was holding the gun, this is how I hold most of my guns. The one over, one under. And, and with the, my bottom finger touching the frame, not the slide, the frame. In them videos, I understand it was took from this perspective to where you couldn't see where this finger was. I've been shooting guns for literally all my life, and I got really big into pistol shooting about, I don't know, I'm 22, I'd probably say whenever I was 14. And I've never, you know, I've, I've been learned, uh, or I've been taught how to shoot, you know, guns all my life. I don't really uh, limp wrist any, I mean, from what you all can see, what I'm trying to get at is that my thumb was never on the slide. I understand this is a different grip angle than the P365, but just trying to explain something to most of y'all. Uh, my no, neither of my thumbs was ever on the slide. I could understand uh, where Yens was coming from, though, so I was just wanting to straighten that out. But even if it was, the amount of force that you would have to take for your thumb to stop the gun from going into battery, I mean, I'm having to push as hard as I can to make even this one. But if my thumb is barely on it. From that full force of that slide coming back, I mean, it does it every time. And I mean, if you're barely even racking, if you're just barely pull, you know, keeping force on it and your finger is still barely riding the slide, it's still not enough force to make the gun not go into battery, in theory. Um, so after I done a little bit more research with that, uh, I come to the conclusion that, well, that my thumb was never riding the slide. I knew that the whole time, but I was just wanting to make sure you all knew it anyway. Uh, Another big question I have was, uh, did I only use one type of ammo? I also done this in the video, but it was like in the six or seven minute mark, so a lot of evidence didn't probably make it to that. But, uh, use four types of ammo. I used SIG V-Crown ammo, that's the self-defense. I shot 25 rounds through it. I shot uh, Winchester White Box. I shot Federal 115, uh, normal brass. And then I shot Blazer Brass. All of them are good, uh, good bullets. None of them cheap, none of them was reloads. That was another big thing. Uh, do I factory reload? It's my fault. Every bit of that was factory ammo that's stored in good uh, temperatures and safes and everything. The Blazer Brass I just bought from the gun store that morning, so I knew nothing was wrong with it. And uh, even the self-defense ammo was messing up bad. So there was another thing out the window that it was not the self-defense ammo. Uh, and even through a lot of the comments on my video, Every single day, I'm getting two to three people say, I bought this gun and it's doing it for me. What, what do I need to do? And um, that's something that I can't help you out with because I haven't received help with mine myself. Uh, my first gun, whenever it started messing up and doing that, after 125 rounds through it, uh, my gun store called Sig and Sig said, uh, that's the first we'd ever heard of it. Just give him a new one that you have and send him home. So that's what they done. I got home and it done the exact same thing. Okay, so I called Sig myself that same day. He mailed him that same day and I called him. That was July 11th and today is the 26th, I think, 26th, yeah. And um, so that's pretty much 15 days ago. And anyway, so I called him and they said, uh, I told them everything was going on. I told them where they could find my video. I told them exactly what to do, what to look up, and exactly how to find them. And the guy on the phone was real smart. He was like, ah, oh, we don't need that. It's fine. You don't have to go no further into it. And, and you know how I am, guys. I mean, you all have watched a lot of my videos. I'm not a smart aleck. I mean, I was mad. Don't get me wrong. But I was, I was handling it completely professional. I was, 
I was not, you know, using no language or anything. I was, you know, just talking like it was just to me and you. And the guy just was just a smart aleck, and that's all that I can say. And he was just like, I'm not worried, or, or like, we don't, we don't have to have that. It's fine. Um, and I told him, I told him, I, t I said, you can look up in the, uh, you can look up in the records where my gun, call my gun um, store uh, had uh, called you all and how you all had told him to, uh, you know, uh, give me a different gun or whatever. And they said, yeah, we can see here where, where that's happened. And uh, he said, so you're telling me a second one's doing that? He said, are you sure now a second one's doing that? I said, man, I said, I said, I'm, you know, I've got law enforcement training background. I said, you know, I'm, I'm not using that, uh, you know, uh, excuse for anything either. But, I mean, you know, I'm a little bit better trained than the average person that, that just gets it going and leaves with it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, as you all can see, I shoot 24-7. But and I know a little bit about gunsmithing too. I'm not no gunsmith or anything, but I know how and why a gun works and shoots and all that. And I told him, I said, Yeah, man, I said, the gun is I mean, both guns was just effective. And he said, Well, how many rounds you shoot through through shoot through them? And I said, 125 through the first one, 50 through the second one. And he said, What was you using the same ammo? He said, Was you using bad ammo? He said, I, I said that's what it is. I said, No. Used four different kinds of ammo, and I said, if you're calling your own ammo, Sig V Crown bad ammo, I said, that's on you. And he said, no, man, that's good ammo. I said, yeah, yeah, that's good ammo. I said, but it's not the ammo's fault. I said, it's the guns. And from a little bit further inspection, and the end of that video, you can't really see it on these because, well, because the uh, guide rod's kind of stuck back. But in the video, it feels, it looks like the guide rod might be holding the front of the gun back. And that's what's making it not go into battery, that the guide rod has got something to do with the slide. That's one, uh, that's one thing that I've seen that, that I thought maybe be it. But now, everybody else commenting and saying it's the ammo, it's how you're holding the gun, you're limp wristing. I didn't limp wrist the gun at all. Um, that's that's about the only thing that I can think. And then one of them was like, uh, can you polish the feed ramp and then let us know? The bullet was all the way into the chamber every single time. There was nothing to do with the bullet. The bullet wasn't catching up on the slide. It wasn't doing a fair to feed or anything like that. The it was it was literally just something to do with the gun and how it was manufactured. Um, and somebody's like, well, won't you left hand shoot it or right hand shoot it? And they said, well, won't you let anybody else shoot it? My cameraman, he shot it and he's a, He's 55 year old and he's, uh, I mean, you know, he shot all his life too and it done the exact same thing on him. And I'm, I'm just telling you guys, the gun was defective. There's no way around it. There's no blaming it on me. There's no blaming it on them. Oh, believe me guys, I'm a SIG fan. I'm a bigger fan of SIG than I am Glock whenever it comes to their company. I mean, they make some of the best 1911s on the market. They make some of the best ARs. They make some of the best pistols. And they're, they're one of the most innovative companies. But I'm going to have to give credit where credit's due, and I'm going to have to take credit whenever they don't deserve it. But SIG does not deserve the credit on this going because it is defective. And that's really the only way that I can put it to you all that it was not my fault that it is the gun's fault. And believe me, I thought of every single X factor that I could ever think about. I thought of literally every single question and every single comment that was ever on any of the videos. I took them into consideration. I thought about them. And then I drew a conclusion on each of them. Sorry I had a little interruption in the video. But like I was saying, I drew a conclusion to every single question or comment that they left on the channel. And I, uh, I've still come to every single same conclusion to every single one of my hypotheses I had. And that is that both of them guns was just defective. I don't know if it was because that they was both uh, consecutive serial numbers that one of them was probably made the exact same day as the other one and maybe their uh, tolerances was a little bit off or something's going on with the way that it was built or whatever, but there was just, there was just something wrong with them two guns. And as you can see, check out Harry Holster's uh, review of it. He has done the exact same thing as mine did. And uh, like I said, I'm getting three to four comments every day of people saying, mine's doing the same thing, what do I need to do? And that leads to another thing that I'm getting really upset over. Uh, like I said, I called SIG and they was, they was pretty much uh, a smart Alex. I mean, there's better words for it, but I try to, you know, this is a, try to keep this pretty clean uh, gun channel and everything. But now, uh, you know, uh, there's better words for what they was to me and uh, that, that I don't, I don't, uh, respect that and I don't appreciate that and uh, a bigger thing is that I left a long uh, long email to them 
telling exactly what the gun was doing, where they could find everything, and to let me know something as soon as they figured something out or to let me know something pretty much, I mean, any time they could, or at least even a, even a I'm sorry. That would have been fine for me, but that was the 11th of July. It's 26th of July, and I still haven't heard a thing from SIG whenever it comes to the email. And, I mean, I pretty much poured my heart out in that email telling them everything that was going on, how much I enjoyed their company, how much I appreciated them and everything. But now, for them to do this to me, and you all know how many SIGs I've had. You can look on the videos and see how many SIGs I've had, and that's not even probably a half of the SIGs I've had. But literally, for them to do that to as loyal as customers I have been to them, it's really hurt my feelings. And being honest with you, unless I just get one in a trade or something like that, I will never have another six hours as long as I live. And they can put that in the bank and they can do whatever they want to. But now, until SIG messages me back and they tell me something, I'm not, I'm not going to be for their, their company anymore because I've done nothing to deserve what they have said to me or what they've done to me or them not even messaging me back. But, I mean, guys, I mean, that's really about the, it. They're, that's the only thing there is to say. And people can say, well, they're, they get messages every single day and they, they have stuff that they got to worry about and they, you know, they'll be getting back to you. It's been 15 days. I messaged Dan Wesson for them to fix the front side on my gun. The next, literally, I messaged them. An hour later, they sent me a post just saying to send it back. I got my gun back in three days. That's damn Wesson. That's CZ. I mean, literally, they fixed my gun and had it back to me in three days. Glock. I sent off a Glock once because I think one of the sights on it was uh, the sight in the back was really loose. I sent it to them. They sent it back to me in two days. I'm trying to think what else I've sent off before. And uh, I sent I sent off a Taurus once. They got it back to me in a week. Still, you know, it's still pretty good. And I've sent off a Ruger before, and they sent it to me back in a week. And I'm just, you know, I'm just saying this, that, gee, I understand there's gun companies, and they're, they're a lot, they're busy and everything, but for them to not even acknowledge my existence and for them to pretty much do what they've done to me on this, it's left a really sour taste in my mouth, and I don't appreciate that, especially with how much money I've, I've spent with their company. Yeah, I'm just a drop in a bucket whenever it comes to how many people's bought stuff, but, I mean... It, it's still the it's still the thing behind it is that if they'll do this to me they would do that to anybody and they I mean from what I've just read from people saying on the comments if you ever say anything's wrong with their pistols at SIG they get really offended and I don't care if they get offended or not because on this one right here they deserve to be offended for me to do what I've done and buy two guns in the same day and both of them not work then, I mean, that's that's really about all there is. Yeah, I understand I got a little bit hated on the on the junk video, and I probably should have calmed down a little bit before I made that, but if you all would have already had two hundred over $200 in gas and ammo, just spending to a, uh, for a gun and that to be all gone in a day, I mean, I would I would understand how somebody would be mad. I would hope it's would anyway, but now, uh, until SIG messages me back or does something, I will never own another 6R, and I will never promote another 6R on this channel. But guys, I appreciate y'all viewing. I hope, uh, I don't know, I really don't understand what uh, what's going on with this gun. If you all still feel like uh, they're reliable guns and you can trust them with your life, uh, then I understand that. But from seeing what my gun is doing and from what uh, other people on YouTube's guns have done, uh, there's really nothing else, there's nothing else to say. But... Uh, I guess we'll uh, we'll find out in the next coming days if uh, Sig don't message me back, and I've got my email my uh, on pretty much everything. So if they want to, they're more than welcome to, and they've got my number, they've got everything else. So the, so pretty much the ball's in your court, Sig. So guys, I appreciate y'all viewing. Uh, if y'all have any questions, comments, any more about the P365XL, just leave them in space below, and I'll try and uh, answer what I can. It's been a while since I've had the gun. But now, and you know, some people was even like, uh, you know, did you like the gun whenever it shot good? It's one of the best pistols I ever shot. I'm being honest with you. Whenever I was shooting it and the way it felt in my hands and the way it, it done recoil, um, I would probably I would probably pack one of them over my P3 or my 938 now. But I can I cannot uh, I cannot trust my life with a gun that done what them guns done on me. So guys, I appreciate y'all viewing, like, and subscribe for more gun reviews, and I'll see you all in the next video.